Fred and Francine and Frank all have a ball, and they're going to see how long it takes to get to the bottom of the cliff. But each of them is going to throw their ball differently. Francine is going to drop hers. Fred is going to throw his ball horizontally. And Frank is going to roll his ball down an inclined plane. Which ball will we reach the ground first? Which ball will have the greatest speed on impact? Well, from projectile motion, we know that Francine's ball and Fred's ball both start with an initial velocity in the y direction of zero. Both are traveling the same distance, and both have the same acceleration of gravity. So both Francine and Fred's balls will hit the ground at the same time. But what about Frank's? What it, what's going to happen on an inclined plane? We're going to consider inclined planes, and then we'll be able to answer these two questions. Let's consider an object on an inclined plane. We're going to actually ignore friction, so it doesn't matter if it's a ball or a box. What kind of acceleration does this ball feel? It feels the acceleration of gravity going straight down, but that acceleration does not all come out going down the inclined plane. In this case, we're going to have to break that acceleration vector into two vectors, the x and the y components. In the x direction, we have some part of this overall vector. We have the x component of the acceleration vector. And in this direction, we have the y component. And the reason I'm calling this x and this y is we're defining our, I'm going to define our coordinate system so that perpendicular to the inclined plane is the y-axis, and parallel to the inclined plane is the x-axis. And that makes our calculations easier for any motion on an inclined plane. So what we need to find to see the acceleration of this object is what is a sub x? What is the acceleration in the x direction? So first, on an inclined plane, objects will accelerate from gravity, but not with the full amount of g, or negative 9.8. Gravitational acceleration is a vector, so we can break it into the x and y components. Let's look at the right triangles that we have here. This angle theta, let's say we've defined our inclined plane to have an angle of theta from above the horizontal. This is a right triangle. So if this angle is theta, then this angle right here this angle in the corner must be 90 minus theta because there's 90 degrees here, theta here, so this must be 90, 90 minus theta. Then we can look at this smaller triangle. This is also a right triangle. This is 90 degrees. This is 90 minus theta. So, so let's find this angle. We'll call it alpha. The total angles for this triangle are 180. That means alpha plus 90 degrees plus this angle, which is 90 minus theta, equals 180 degrees. Combine these two together. Simplify by subtracting 180 for both sides. And you can see that this angle here, alpha, is equal to the angle theta. So we can actually replace it here. So that angle is theta. We're going to use that to come up with our acceleration in the x direction. So we're looking for a x. The overall acceleration is equal to g. And we're going to use our sine rule. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of theta is a sub x over the hypotenuse, which is g. And we can solve for a sub x. So for this example, the acceleration in the x direction is equal to g sine theta. Now there may be cases when you're moving up an incline where the acceleration is a negative g sine theta. This equation is not on your AP equation sheet, but this is an equation that you will need to know for understanding how we accelerate down an incline of angle theta. It will be plus when the ex the object is speeding up, and it will be a negative acceleration when the object is moving up the inclined plane and slowing down.
Let's consider some limiting cases. What if theta were zero degrees? That means your inclined plane has no angle. It's a flat surface. What happens to the acceleration in the x direction? From gravity. In this case, when we plug our g into the equation, we're going to use a positive 9.8, not a negative. The negative comes in in the plus and minus part of it, so we're not going to do plus or minus negative. We're going to do plus or minus positive 9.8. And what is the value of sine of 0? It's 0. So in the limiting case where theta is 0, our acceleration from gravity is 0, and that makes sense. Let's consider another limiting case where theta is equal to 90 degrees. Theta of 90 degrees means our inclined plane is completely vertical. What would we expect our acceleration to be? Let's see. Since sine of 90 is 1, we're going to get an acceleration of a positive 9.8 or a negative 9.8. And that depends on how you defined your coordinate system. If you say that this is positive, it'll be accelerating in the positive direction. If you say that this is negative, it will be accelerating in the negative direction. But the magnitude matches what we expect. It is complete acceleration from gravity of 9.8. Anytime that we have another angle, we'll get some number between 0 acceleration and 9.8. Let's look back at our questions. We know that Francine and Fred's balls will hit the ground at the same time because they both have an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. They both have an initial velocity of zero and their initial y value is the same. For Frank, his acceleration is going to be the acceleration on an inclined plane, which will be less than negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So Frank's ball will take longer to reach the bottom. So for the first question, which ball will reach the ground first? The answer is Fred and Francine's ball will reach the ground first. Which ball will have the greatest speed at the bottom? At the bottom, the magnitude of the vectors will be like this. Francine's has a vertical velocity. Fred's has the same vertical velocity, but also has a horizontal velocity. So overall has a greater magnitude. Frank's ball has no initial velocity, and it has a smaller acceleration. So at the bottom, its speed will be less in magnitude than Fred's. So the answer is Fred will have the greatest ball speed at the bottom. Let's consider a problem. In a skiing competition, the skiers started from rest and accelerated down the mountain at a constant slope. The skiers traveled to 360 meters while dropping a vertical distance of 170 meters. What is the fastest possible speed at the bottom? Let's start with the picture. This picture shows the skier starts at the top at an initial velocity of 0 meters per second. They're going to travel down a slope, a distance of 360 meters, but we know the height change will be 170 meters. For these problems, we're going to solve it in one dimension because we're defining our axis as this being the x-axis. So we're not going to treat it as x and y components, just x components. To do that, we're going to need to figure out in the x direction what is the acceleration from gravity. Well, to find it, we have g, but we need to find the angle, theta. Since we have these two numbers, 360 and 170, we can find theta by using our sine rule. And when we have sine theta over here, we're going to need to do the inverse sine. That will give us theta. Make sure you're in degrees in your calculator. Divide 170 by 360, and then take the inverse sine. And you will get 28 degrees. Once you have your theta, you can find your acceleration in the x direction. Since we're going to be accelerating down the incline in the positive direction, our acceleration is going to be a positive g sine theta. We get our acceleration in the x direction as 4.6 meters per second squared. That's reasonable. We know it should be between 0 and 9.8, and it should be positive. So now we have our acceleration. We're going to write our givens. We know our acceleration, our initial velocity, our initial position, and we want to find our final velocity.
Which equation will help us find our final velocity with those values? We're going to pick the third kinematics equation. We're going to plug our numbers in. Our final velocity in the x direction is what we're solving for. Multiply these numbers together and then take the square root. Once you've taken the square root, you should get a final velocity of 58 meters per second.